I wanna remind people of how bad it is. I know that it's probably not necessary because a lot of you are experiencing this right now. The heat wave that we've been experiencing over the southern tier of the US is expanding into the plains, the Midwest, the mid Atlantic, the Northeast, that's pretty much all of us. It's triggered heat alerts for over 180 million people. And look, I know that there's a lot of people suffering out there, but I do want to give you a little bit of good news is however bad it is out there, it's probably better than it's gonna be for any summer over the next few decades. So enjoy it while you can. Heat events are already the top annual weather related killer in the US. Uh, especially when they persist over a long period of time, which they are. Uh, to give you an idea of how bad it is in particular areas, in New York over Thursday and Friday, the city could see heat index values up to 106 degrees. Baltimore and DC, 110, 105 in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Phoenix saw its 27th day in a row with a high temperature of at least 114 degrees. The previous record was just 18 days. so. Maybe we'll double it in a single year. That's the sort of temperature that you you have to wonder, is this a place that people can live going forward? I know a lot of people can't leave the same as they can't leave the coast with oceans rising. But how can we survive in the conditions that we've already created? I mean, we got to act. That's really what this comes down to, even in Ohio right now, John, record highs happening, record storms happening right now in the Midwest. But unfortunately, it is not enough to move these people. They will not move until the money interests tell them to move. And that really is a sad reality. So unless we, the people, you know, rise up, we really do need to rise up against this kind of owner donor foolishness that is really going to end all of us. And as I said, it's, it hits, it's gonna hit everybody. Uh, poorer people first and more deeply, but ultimately the ultra wealthy will be hit as well. I, I read an article, John, about some of them uh, putting their bunker, getting their bunkers together. Mm-hmm. Uh, they think they're gonna survive this thing, but they will not. For our viewers who have not watched, don't look up, baby. You better go ahead and not and watch it. I won't do a spoiler alert, but that ending was quite amazing. Let's just say the yeah. people who thought they were gonna escape did not escape. Eventually, eventually. It's gonna get everybody. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, how long until? I mean, I guess it's already happening in Saudi Arabia, but they're they're just gonna be building like big like domed arcologies or whatever, like gated communities, but with twenty first century technology that you'll only be able to get into if you have the money or whatever, and it'll be insulated from most of the effects of this, and they'll grow food that no longer can grow in the wild. Like it seems like sci fi, but we are racing towards that. By the way, along the way, before we move on, I just want to acknowledge a couple of things being done. Uh, Democrats have proposed a bill to protect US workers from the life threatening heat. When they say protect them from the heat, they mean kind of a little bit around the edges. It directs the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, and the US Department of Labor, the DOL, to create policies for heat exposure in indoor and outdoor environments. So that maybe eventually we can mandate those water breaks that the Republicans seem so dead set on taking away from conservative working class people. The Biden administration also plans the first ever heat wave hazard alert for workers. Now, of course, he's not declaring a climate emergency. There's a lot more that could be done, but there's at least a little bit of acknowledgement that people are dropping dead in the streets. John, this is nothing. They, they playing games, seriously. I mean, the Democrats are complicit, just like the Republicans. You're playing games. What the hell can a policy do to save people's lives? And you mentioned the Republicans. Here we go again. In Texas, a law was passed to deny workers water breaks. I mean, this is how callous and cold and immoral these people have become. And from the White House, we get some policy. Changes? No, this time to gas up the jet. This is the time to shame these folks. This is the time to rally Americans because I think most Americans, regardless of their political ideology, if you just ask them this question about whether or not workers who work in the heat or in the cold, in extreme weather conditions, whether or not they deserve a break, whether they not whether or not they deserve water, whether or not they deserve air conditioned delivery trucks. Shout out to the Teamsters of UPS. Yeah. Most 
people, most people would say yes. Even if they flame in rightist or flame in left, however you want to define it, because that those political ideologies go out the door because most people have either somebody in their family or know somebody that works in these professions who would think that it is more than decent. To ensure that they have what they need to keep working, and that need is to keep living. And the last time I checked, if you are alive, you need water. Give me a break. So yeah, it's underrated. F plus, it is underrated. Water breaks. I've never thought in my lifetime the fools will be going after water breaks, but here we are. But a F plus 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 for the Biden administration because they are doing nothing in the face in the face of this neo fascist wave. That yeah. is taking over this country. John, they get no credit to acknowledge it. Hell, my toddlers can acknowledge it when they tell <laughs> me why yeah, I'm hot. Yeah. yeah. These people have the power to do something about it, and they're not. Um, the, the only thing I would add is let's gas up the jet metaphorically, not literally. No more gassing up the jets. Let's ground to the jets, <laughs> I think. Well, Air Force <laughs> One, I'm talking about, you know. Oh, there you go. Okay. Quickly. And and maybe someday electric Air Force One, EV1. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.